Hey, Bruce Naylor here, Frugal Tech. How you doing? This is a Q&A session. I haven't done one of these in a while. I really apologize. I've been very busy with work and I've not been the best at responding to people's comments on my videos. It's, it's just a matter of time, folks. It really is. I'm trying to wrap up a lot of projects and uh, I've been busier than ever in my whole career for the last three years. It's just been super intense. But that's just the way it goes, right? This is the way it goes. But let's, let's get into the questions. And the first one comes from View52, been a very good uh, friend of the channel. View uh, asked me about uh, if I was going to do an unboxing video of my new gaming chair, because here about a week ago I tweeted out that uh, at 59 years old, I just bought my first gaming chair. Now, the reason I got a gaming chair wasn't because I'm a big time gamer or anything like that. It just seems to me that they would be. You know, they're designed for people to spend a lot of time in a chair, so they should be super comfortable. And I sort of kind of like the looks of one. All right. So I went and uh, I've been doing videos about best selling items on Amazon. Came across this as an Amazon bestseller from a company called Homal, H O M A L L. Bought the chair, got the chair, uh, and it was quite a heavy box that it came in, and put it together. Now, I will say the instructions are pretty clear on the chair. However, I ran into a number of issues actually putting the chair together. And I thought, what am I? I put zillions of chairs together. Why is this one so difficult? Two major reasons. The, I don't know what you call them, the holes the bolts go into were misaligned. Rather than the, uh, the uh, bolts going straight in, some of the uh, were drilled out more of an angle. And furthermore, uh, the pleather, or the leather, it says it's a leather, but uh, the leather was covering many of the holes. It was very poor quality um, control in this chair. And the back seat really wouldn't line up quite right. So it's kind of uh, off at a bit of an angle, but that's just because of the way the holes are, you know, threaded for the bolts. There's not much you can do about that. Uh, the chair uh, creaks a lot. Hear this? You know, so it's kind of a noisy chair. It's just not a quality product, not the one I got. Now, I've seen a whole bunch of review videos on these and people talking about how they put them together in 15, 20 minutes. I guarantee you, I struggled with this thing almost an hour. And man, my hand was exhausted <laughs> from trying to get these bolts in because they where I was fighting against pulling the leather out, trying to get the bolt in to go in when they weren't going in straight, they wanted to go in an angle. It was just not a quality product. I would not recommend a home all uh, executive gaming chair from Amazon, would not recommend one to anybody. Uh, many of the videos showed that the uh, pillows, for example, uh, for your lumbar support, has some kind of strap to hold them in place. This didn't. Um, I think maybe they might have changed the design somewhere along the lines. This one was 119 bucks. Um, not recommended. <laughs> Just I would I would look elsewhere. Maybe spend a little bit uh, more money get a, a higher quality item. However, I will say that it is a comfortable chair, and uh, so I mean that's why I really wanted a gaming chair was for the comfort, and so far it is pretty comfortable. But as far as the quality control, it wasn't there in this one. I'll put it that way. I had a very bad experience. No reason to do an unboxing video because it's just, in my opinion, more or less piece of junk. And I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. But uh, that's just me. That is my opinion. Okay, the next question comes from Air Pee Wee. This is in reference to the Sony AX53. I get lots and lots of questions about the AX53 because I'm a big camcorder guy. I love my camcorders. I'm recording this video on my AX53. Yes, I have an EOS hat on and I do have a couple DSLRs, but I just love working with camcorders. At any rate, uh, uh, RPW writes, how much better is this camera, the AX53, than the HDR-PJ260? Uh, and it seems mine has most of the features and records in 60P or 60i. 1080p 40. Well, first off, uh, Airpwee, if that camera is doing what you want it to do, 
great. Uh, the AX53 sets, sets a new standard, or did at the time of introduction, of consumer-grade 4K point-and-shoot camcorders with some uh, semi-professional features, such as a headphone jack, the ability to manually control certain aspects of the camera, the balanced optical steady shot system, which is kind of like a, for the lack of a better term, kind of a built-in gimbal. The AX53 is a totally different animal. It is much, much newer. You've got a higher resolution a touch LCD on it. Of course, you have the 4K at a, up to 100 megabits per second, which gives you really beautiful video out of this camera. The XAVCS uh, codec, uh, which I don't know is in your camera, maybe, but I'm not sure. There's just the newer um, sensor on here uh, that's uh, in the camera. The uh, sensor is also designed at 16 by 9 aspect ratio, designed specifically for a 4K uh, type camera. It's just a different beast altogether than what you got. So if you want to move up into 4K, this is an absolutely great camera to do it with. In a similar vein, I get a question from uh, Colin. Uh, who writes, there are some reviews out there saying that the AX53 has uh, the balanced optical steady shot system. It performs bad, especially when on a tripod. Is that true? There have been many stories out there on the internet of people having trouble with the AX53 on a tripod, and Sony addressed this with a firmware update. Now, mine is locked down right now on a tripod, uh, but I'm not doing any kind of pans or anything with it. However, I have, and I think the firmware update pretty much addressed the issue. But if you recall that the, the balanced optical steady shot system is on a, this gimbal type of thing, and I think if you still did a pretty quick, you know, kind of a whip pan on it, you would get that movement uh, on there. But as far as I know, um, the, the AX53 is supposed to sense that it's on a tripod or locked down and prevent that from happening. I personally have not had any real issues with the camera. I certainly wouldn't be afraid to buy an AX53 based on that issue. I think Sony's pretty much addressed that. The uh, The next question is actually kind of a uh, more of a statement with the question from John Armwood. And uh, I was talking about trying to figure out, you know, 1080p 4K, is 4K really worth it, you know, on YouTube, etc. And uh, John wrote, hey, I enjoyed your talk, as I always do. You raise the issues that I've been thinking about. My YouTube channel is a brand new, uh, is brand new, and I must be frugal. Love the word. Thank you. Uh, as a disabled senior citizen, my focus is education. I'm a retired law and criminal justice professor, and I'm questioning whether 4K videos are necessary. I've started using 2K on my iPhone 8K. I shot one video in 4K, but when I tested on my 4K TV, it did not look better than my 2K videos. I need a DSLR, but that purchase is not practical at the moment. It's good to see someone else pondering the same question. So the question really is, is a 4K video necessary? Played on a 4K TV, really couldn't tell the difference. So I'm going to be brutally honest with you. I have a 55-inch LG 4K HDR TV. And the jump, let me put it to you this way. When we had standard definition television, it went from that jump from SD to uh, HD, which is 720p. It was a vastly noticeable improvement. The jump from 720p to 1080p, full HD, not quite as noticeable, but maybe a little bit. And then when you jump from 1080p to 4K, especially on a nice size 4K TV at a distance, I can't, can't always tell the difference myself uh, between 4K and 1080p. This, they both look really, really super nice. So I think that might, might be what you're kind of experiencing. You know, when we go from uh, 1080p to 4K, we're really talking four times the resolution, right? We got twice the horizontal pixels, we have twice the vertical. So four times resolution, when you're up closer to the image, that's when I think you can begin to tell the difference between uh, Full HD and 4K. That being said, HBO, or, uh, HBO, YouTube, you know, compresses videos and they do stuff to a video. It not always looks the best with 4K. 
since your focus is on education, and that tends to be a rather long tail type of video. In other words, it's going to have a really, really long shelf life out there, depending on the topic. Uh, I did a video on CRM like three years ago, and it still gets five to 10,000 views a month. Uh, I don't think that the 4K is all that necessary at this point. Uh, I think you'd be just fine with 1080p because it's really the content that makes it not... People are not going to judge you because it's in 4K or... Most people don't even have 4K monitors or wait to even watch 4K video uh, from YouTube. So I think it's the, I think you're just fine with the 1080p for the foreseeable future. I don't think you're going to be judged on that. What is going to be most important, spend your money, John, on capturing great audio, <laughs> okay? Make that your more of a, at least as big a priority, if not more, then, you know, whether it go 4K or whatever, make the audio and the content the priority. And as long as the video is acceptable quality, you can do it in 720p, just regular HD, and people will still watch and not worry about, uh, you know, the 4K. So don't spend your money so much on the, the camera, but I would definitely have make sure I had the best audio gear that I could get. So hopefully that answers your question. Kristen Schmidt writes, the, um, the iPad Pro is actually the only Apple product I really want, mainly as a second screen while I'm on the couch and want to check the news while playing on my TV. But I find my phone big enough for that, but would love to have a second device just to save the battery on my phone. Is it worth it? Uh, no. <laughs> if that, uh, Kristen, I have to qu question why you're looking at an iPad Pro when an ordinary iPad would suffice. Um, this just sounds like overkill to me. Uh, the iPad Pro uh, is, I think, Apple's attempt to come up with a product that would suffice as a laptop replacement for, you know, professionals or content creators on the go. It's kind of, that's more the iPad Pro, especially with the, the uh, of course, it had the pen support and all that. I think the new, even basic model uh, supports the, isn't that something? Apple wants, what, 330 bucks or whatever for the, basic 9.7 inch iPad, yet you're selling a hundred dollar pen for that. That's like 25%, you know, the, or a third of the price of the, uh, yeah, a third of the price. Of, I mean, an accessory costs a third as much as the main device is crazy to me. Okay. But back to the iPad pro, I think the iPad pro is to appeal for a more professional type user, whether they're artists or, you know, they have a certain, just as a second screen to watch videos, no, you'd be just fine with an ordinary iPad. In fact, even an older generation iPad that you can get refurbished through the Apple Store is going to make an excellent second screen if that's all you're going to use it for. I, unless there's more to this use case and what you mentioned in your question, just stick with a standard iPad. You'll be more than satisfied with what you can do, and you can save a whole bunch of cash in the interim period, okay? Hopefully that answers your question. I'm sure I'm going to screw this up, but... Uh, Zawa, Z or X I A, show, maybe it's Showa, uh, X I A O H U A. I'm sorry if I, I'm, I'm, I'm terrible uh, pronouncing those kind of names. I has a question about the Seagate 6 terabyte backup hub that I bought several months ago. Wants to know if it's available. I could use it with a Mac PC uh, at the same time. Yes. Okay. Um, when I got this, uh, I, I initially tried to reformat it just to work on my Mac. I didn't, wasn't interested in any kind of using with the PC. Uh, I tried every which way but Sunday to make the thing work, and uh, Mac OS X just would not recognize that drive, no matter what. There's actually a version of it specifically for Mac users, but I got the Windows one. Uh, no matter what I did, I just could not uh, get the drive to, uh, to mount or do it. It just, I don't know. Then I came across, uh, there was a Paragon utility that allows Mac OS to uh, read and write to NTFS formatted files. Uh, I installed that utility. It's been smooth sailing ever since. And now I can unplug this drive, hook it up to my PC, read and write to it, bring it back to the Mac, read and write to it. Um, it's been a very good little drive. I'm very happy with it. You know, I've got a, um, uh, a G drive here, three terabyte G drive, and a lot of Mac users have bought G drives. Great drive, but it is just, it's got a very loud fan on it. It, it. it wakes up all the time for no reason, and the fan is loud and um, would not 
recommend re would not recommend one of these anymore. Um, this Seagate's just perfectly fine. Yes, you can use it back and forth. Okay, and the final question comes from Mike Kubach. And this is in regards to a video I did that was a smackdown between the Suyui tripod, the jo Joby Gorilla Pod, and the Manfrotto uh, Pixie Evo tripod. Uh, it's kind of a you know battle of all the tripods. And Mike asked me, as was, in the period since you posted this review, have you had issues with the Joby Gorilla Pod? As you mentioned, you have heard about the legs going bad on it. Has this happened yet? And how long have you had the Joby for? Okay, I have heard of issues with the Joby Gorilla Pod. I've owned it and going on close to two years now, I guess. And yes, I've actually had uh, the legs kind of uh, pop apart uh, on me, but putting it, popping them back on was not a big deal. And I think about three months ago or so, I had my Canon 70D parked on top of it. And for whatever reason, it just started, the leg just started going, <laughs> And it would have toppled over. Had I not been in the room, I could have ended up with a broken lens or camera. Um, I don't trust it. <laughs> I certainly don't. Unless I, I would not trust it uh, unattended for any length of time, especially with an expensive camera. Uh, they're wonderful in, co in concept, but the execution, I think, leaves something to be desired. I understand why they did it that way, but it could be done differently. And there are people that make tripods that do. It was Casey Neistat, to the best of my knowledge, that popularized, popular, popularized, this tongue twister for me, uh, this particular uh, uh, tripod. And I, yes, I, I bought one, not because I wanted to be like Casey Neistat, but uh, I thought, boy, it would be nice to have something that, you know, I could wrap around a tree branch and get some unique shots and so forth. Turns out, those type of videos I do really don't justify that. Uh, but that being said, look, um, Unless you have very specific application for the Joby Gorilla Pod, I would recommend this right here, the Suryui uh, tripod. I forget the model number on it. Um, uh, the, uh, but um, these things are amazing. Uh, they're, they're, the only problem you would have with one of these is if you put a really heavy camera on it and then you have it all the way up because uh, then it will want to topple over on you. But other than that, these are excellent. Can work. The tripod, the selfie stick's got a nice ball head on it. Um, really, really nice. You could uh, set this up, put a small camera, do a top-down shot. I mean, it's just, I can't stress what a great little tripod these are. And then my next choice would be the Manfrotto Pixie uh, Evo. That would be my choice. But the um, Gorilla Pod definitely has its issues. I think it's got some fundamental flaws in the way it's designed. There are competitors out there that do a much better job. If you're looking for a bendy type tripod, then I would look at competitors to the uh, the Joby. Not to say it's a terrible product. I think they make some good stuff, but I I just know that I've had problems with the legs popping off. I've actually had a really expensive camera just about by the farm because it just decided one day to go. <laughs> All right, and I think that's going to do this session of Q and A today. So. I always appreciate your comments down below. Uh, thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you loved it. Um, I borrowed that from Dave 2D. I, like the, I love that guy. I love his videos. Check him out. Bruce Naylor, take care.